Hey foodies! My name is Epube and you are most definitely welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be making a goosey soup. Hmm. You know that soup that has been trending on TikTok? That oh, people, some have been jonesing around with it and some have been falling in love with it. This is that soup. We are going to be making it today. So stay tuned. And if you have not subscribed, subscribe, get on the wagon and let's get cooking. For this recipe, we're going to be using meat and we have cow head, cow leg, they're all mixed together in this bowl. If someone tells you that onions is not a necessity, please don't listen to them. Hmm? Please. This is very important. Stock fish oboroko already washed and ready to be used. Some Cameroon pepper for that heat. In this plate, we have tatashe shombo. We're going to all blend that together. Scotch bonnet pepper, atarudo, anyone you call it, but please add to your discretion. I love the ocean soka, especially in making soup, so I'm going to be using some of them. I bought some ugu from the market, came back, saw that I had some green too. Instead of allowing that to waste, I decided to add that in. So we have here ugu and we have green too crayfish you know there are some ingredients that you don't want to miss in your soup <laughs> this is one of them some dry prawns it's not really a necessity you can decide to skip it though <laughs> the last but not the least at all <laughs> a goosey melon seed so first things first we are going to cook the cow meat and add the stock fish and onions and for that heat and flavor some cameroon pepper finally we are going to be adding some water please add plenty water because we're going to be using the pressure cooker to cook the meat thoroughly and this is all the seasoning that we need for this stage of cooking and you know that pressure cooker reduces the time. Cow meat takes the longest time and pressure cooker helps you to reduce the time drastically. Like if you have awful experiences whereby you put the cow meat and be waiting for it to cook four hours, it's not even shaking. Then you know that this pressure cooker for the cow meat is very necessary. And you cannot be opening to check if there's enough water or not. So in here you can see that I have some that some of those prawns, dry prawns, the head. I removed that instead of throwing that away. We decided to blend it all with the tatashe, shombo, atarodo, and onion. So we're going to blend that roughly if you want or thoroughly. So I added the ogre main because I want it all to blend together. Add some water and blend. And it's the right time to wash our vegetables, the ugu, the green. You wash them all together. You wash them thoroughly with salt and make sure it's squeaky clean <laughs> if there's anything like that just wash your vegetables right wash them thoroughly and make sure there are no germs in it in a heated pan we're going to add some red oil and allow that to heat up for a few minutes so remember all that that we blended the shombo the tatashe the onions the opening all that we're going to add that in right now like you know for some people who don't like onions in their food like my husband doesn't like seeing onions in his food at all like it turns him off so you just have to factor in their interest and also make them feel involved like enjoy the meal like you know so i hope you didn't forget that we left our meat in the pressure cooker well it's done so I just removed the oboroko, the stock fish that I added to it and we're going to throw it into the sauce. And after that, you're going to get some dry fish you add. So you add the, the, the fish that you have, either oboroko or stock fish, any one that you have. You just add that in and mix it all up together. So allow that all to get to know themselves better with the sauce and allow everything to release the juice if you get what i mean 
remember i said you add anything fishy that you have for the soup you add it now so i've added the dry prawns and then we're going to stir to combine for seasoning i'm going to be using maggi crayfish hmm. this thing is hard like roke i cannot use my hand and mash it so just throw it inside the heat is going to dissolve everything inside and you're good to go also we're going to be adding some grounded uziza and then you allow it to all cook together until it's done it's our sauce mm. at this stage <laughs> i did not you know like sometimes when you're cooking in the kitchen you don't perceive the aroma until you step out of the kitchen. It's like someone outside in the next street is perceiving the aroma of something going on in your kitchen. <laughs> anyway, we're going to add some salt. Make sure you don't over add it. And then you are going to add some crayfish. I'm going to add half of the crayfish. You're going to add the rest later. So you're going to add some crayfish. You start to combine. Once you see that your sauce is done, then we proceed to the next day. You see that it's almost done. We're going to allow it for some few minutes and it's done. Once you can visibly see the oil, you know that your sauce is ready. So I'm just going to add in that meat that we boiled. I'm going to add that in, mix it all up before we add our egusi. So this stage you can decide to add some liquid into your egusi and form it into a paste before adding you can decide to throw it in anyhow you want to add your egusi it's it's just up to you so you just add it if you want it lumpy then you add some water form a paste and all that so but for me this is how i love my egusi soup i don't like it too lumpy but i still like it you know egusi ish <laughs> So just add your goosey and stir it for a few minutes before you add your liquid. This stage is very, very critical and it depends on the type of pot that you're using. If you're using like a regular pot, at this stage it might start sticking to the pot. So you want to reduce the heat or immediately add the liquid so you don't get your goosey burnt in the process of trying to make something nice, you know. You don't want all your efforts to be in vain. Let's say after about five minutes, I'm going to introduce our liquid, the stock that you have, the liquid that you have, water, anyone. You just add that. And then adding the liquid depends on how thick you like your egusi or how runny you like your egusi. So it's completely depends on you. So you add just enough on how thick you want it and that's all personally i don't like thick egusi like i don't like it when it's too thick and i don't like it when it's too watery so i have to find a balance in the middle and i added this much water because i want the water to cook down on its own that way the egusi like the taste is like uh, so so lovely so remember, remember that uh, remaining egg, uh, what do we call it crayfish that we have we're going to add that in now and then allow this water to cook down for a bit let's say 15 minutes before i bring it down and don't forget to check if there's need to add salt balance up the seasoning and allow it to cook down before adding the vegetables also don't forget that you are going to be turning your egusi in between don't leave it on the pot on on fire and then you say ah let me just go and relax for a few minutes your egusi will burn and all that your effort in the kitchen will go to waste so why not you do it once and enjoy your egusi and then relax <laughs> the ball is in your cut man so why the egusi is on fire I have some uziza leaves that I came back with from the village during the Christmas. So I'm going to be using some of that. Chop it up, wash it, 
and set it aside for when you are ready to add the Osiza leaves. One thing I always look out for whenever I'm making a goosey is for that oil to come on top and then I know that it's ready. That stage I'm just okay with it at that stage and you add your vegetables, your ugo, your green, your uziza leaves. I don't like so much vegetable in my goosey. I don't know personally I still don't like a lot of vegetables in it. So you just add vegetables to your preference how vegetable you should like it. But this is just my perfect egusi soup. So you're just going to allow it on fire for 5 minutes max. You turn off the heat and your food is ready. To be very honest, if you are still watching until now, hmm, you are the real MVP. <laughs> I'm really grateful. Please don't forget to like this video. It helps me to know whether you like what you see and if you enjoyed our time cooking, you know. <laughs> I'm really so grateful and I hope you enjoyed this recipe. And don't forget that when you try it out, you tag me on my social media pages, Hey Foodies on Instagram, Proud Food Lover on Facebook. Tag me on it. I would love to see your recreations. Until my next video. Bye.